Okay, good evening everyone. It's a late one, but I thought I'd do this uh, quick video to kind of share some of the stuff that is happening specific to the UK in the energy industry um, in terms of the replacement for the feed-in tariff. So as of the 31st of March 2019, the feed-in tariff ceased to exist. So if you're having um, solar or wind or hydro installations after the 31st of March 2019, you're no longer eligible for this feed-in tariff because it no longer exists. So it's still not 100% clear what the future holds, but there's a series of consultations going on right now around something known as the Smart Export Guarantee SEG or SEG, however you want to refer to it. So, because I'm extremely sad, I've been doing a little bit of reading um, to understand what that might involve and what it might be about. And I thought I'd just do a quick video to share it with you guys, because I'm sure um, some of the people that watch this channel, specifically around um, the solar install, perhaps you've got solar, or you're having the process of having it installed, and you're wondering what does kind of the future mean to you. So share a little bit about what I know right now, which isn't a great deal. Um, and obviously we'll do a future video as things become more clear. So to kind of bring us up to speed, um, I can't remember when the feed entire thing started now, but it used to be relatively uh, profitable. You get like 47 pence per kilowatt or something in terms of what you generated in the export rates and all this sort of stuff. Um, whereas now, like when I did my um install i think i get something like three point something pence per kilowatt for what i generate and then about five pence per kilowatt for kind of what i uh, would potentially export so the way it works right now though is the amount you generate is metered so um it's it's known how much um solar or hydro whatever it is that you've generated but for solar uh, specifically it's estimated that you only use half of it so you would export half of it and you get paid for that five pence rate at 50 percent of what you generated there is no export meter though uh, only the generation meter so whether you export anything or all or more it, it makes no difference so right now there is this um, smart export guarantee discussion going on uh, with the government and legislators and everything um, and it's been through some previous discussions already. Then there's another one um, that has pretty much just started. Um, and the deadline for those discussions are the 27th of May, 2019. Hopefully there perhaps a, a point to make a decision then. Um, and basically what they're doing is looking to see how they can make changes to something that's known as the electricity supply license conditions this, this is basically what applies to the people in this country, in the UK, that generate and then sell electricity. So they all have to abide by this electricity supply license condition. And I think my understanding is they have to renew their licenses every year and be compliant with certain things. So the government say basically they got rid of the, the feed-in tariff and decided to scrap that because it wasn't fair to the UK taxpayer and wasn't also in lines with the UK government's kind of green plans and incentives and things moving forward. So the idea of this um, smart export guarantee is basically to provide a route for what they call um, small scale, low carbon generators to be able to offer that energy that's surplus into the market. So if you have a, a solar or any kind of installation uh, that's no longer eligible for the feed-in tariff. Obviously, all of that um, electricity that you generate that you don't use gets put back into the grid, and so you don't get any money. Um, but that is energy that the grid does not have to produce. So technically speaking, the people that supply electricity in this company are benefiting uh, for free. Right, so they're able to obviously that electricity is supplied to people's homes, they're getting paid for it, but they didn't generate it 
You did. Um, so obviously there's the government identified the fact that there is a, some unfairness there. Um, and so they're, they're, they need to kind of rectify that. They don't seem to be in a mega hurry because, I mean, I think they knew uh, for some time that they're going to get rid of the feed-in tariff, but obviously they're still deciding what they're going to do. I guess they're still uh, busy screwing up Brexit. So basically um, their plan is there is an ability to have this secondary legislation um, applied to the electricity supply licence um, I think this is based around the Energy Act uh, 2008 or something, um, that they can basically enforce a requirement for this smart export guarantee for any electricity supplier. And they define that as someone who supplies electricity to more than 15,000 customers. Um, they will have to offer s at least one form of tariff uh, under this smart export guarantee. So they will have to be able to say, hey, you supply surplus electricity um, back to the grid. We will offer to buy this from you at X pence. And they would also then define over what um, period. So perhaps, let's just making numbers up. I will buy any electricity uh, that you export off you at five pence per kilowatt for the next five years. So regardless of fluctuations in electricity price and everything, you're guaranteed to get five pence per kilowatt for everything that you export for that period of time. One of the other kind of proposed requirements is where possible, this should be done smartly. So obviously the government uh, suggesting that the smart electricity meters that people have in their house, the SMETS meters, We'll be able to do this or any other device that can take half hourly readings and obviously the way this would work is obviously that meter is able to see even today if you have a smart meter the smart meter knows um, when electricity has been exported back to the grid if you have a look at yours it will say red on it um, and that's kind of signifying that electricity is flowing out of your house back into the grid um, the, the one thing that is interesting uh, I'm not. I can't quite decide why this is a requirement. There's a, a current piece of this proposed legislation that says additional checks or verification may have to be done if someone also has um, battery storage. Now, my assumption there is that perhaps when you are applying um, for your smart export guarantee, you're going to have to obviously give your address uh, and so for using the context of solar, the size of your solar rate and your inverter and all that sort of stuff. And then I'm guessing that the energy supplier would then obviously use information they have available to kind of estimate um, your amount of generation and your amount of export for the year, which will help them factor in, um, you know, the amount of electricity that they need to supply that isn't gonna be coming from, you know, the, the smaller, kind of supplies that we'd be able to provide to them. So obviously if you have a battery, that obviously will limit um, your ability to export. So I guess they want to understand the whole picture, what is the size of your array, the inverter, and your battery storage to then get a better estimate of what will be exported um, to the grid. I don't, it's kind of odd that they specifically call that out because in my head, you would assume that just be what you'd have to supply anyway. And obviously the export meter is after all of that anyway. So all, it's not like the um, export meter would export electricity past the meter and then into um, the battery to give a kind of dodgy reading. But anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and the other thing that they've said is whatever tariffs come up, we'll have to, um, cater for what they call negative pricing. So this is all based around the demand on the grid. So obviously at different times of the day, um, there is different levels of demand on the grid. So basically this negative pricing is about when there isn't a demand. So they have surplus electricity and you're still going to be pumping electricity into the grid anyway, because you're just exporting because you don't need it. Um, and so how do they account for that fact when the grid doesn't need electricity but you're still putting some in anyway. So does that does that mean that somehow that five pence per kilowatt we mentioned earlier won't 
always be valid and it, that's only when it's positive pricing when it's negative pricing something else will happen i don't know it seems a bit complicated um to me but uh, you know i'm sure they come up with something um and the other thing that i'm talking about is having a central register so if everyone who is um going to be just defined as this small scale low carbon generator you will be put on a central register that is separate from the energy supplier I guess basically so the government can get a good understanding and get you know metrics and all this sort of stuff um, so you'll, you'll then be classified as a small scale low carbon generator and the only current um, restriction that I've seen in the paper that I've read is that the system what you have whether that be wind solar or hydro um, is not able to generate more than 50 um, kilowatt hours so 50 kilowatt hours or less um, generation ability um, will be kind of what your system is so obviously my system here nine kilowatt array six kilowatt inverter well within um, the parameters however I will, will finish uh, I guess with one point and it's probably an obvious one if you are currently already on the feed-in tariff um, scheme you would not be eligible for the smart export guarantee because then obviously you'd be doubling up and that wouldn't be fair um, so it will be interesting to see um, if there's a scenario probably not if you are on the one of the original fit schemes where you you know, got these guaranteed generation and export payments for 25 years but for someone like myself who's kind of got solar quite towards the end of the feed-in tariff scheme I wonder if it will make any, um, will there be any benefit to consider moving um, to the supply export guarantee, or, or if that's even possible if you're already on the fit and got that 25 or 20 year kind of guarantee. Thinking about it right now, like for me, I'm pretty sure the answer would be no, because my whole plan uh, in my house is to utilize everything I generate and really minimize. What generate so the stuff is going into the car that just goes into the car goes into the battery goes into my water and where possible i want to minimize the amount that i export so if i did have an export meter reading stuff you know hardly anything is going to be going there so it wouldn't make sense for me right now to move from the feed-in tariff to um the smart export guarantee but maybe you know in 20 years time when i'm no longer eligible for fit maybe then i end up perhaps legally even have to move to the Smart Export Guarantee Scheme. So there we go, I hope this video was kind of informative. Um, so it looks like something is coming to replace the feed-in tariff, um, but like most things uh, with the UK government right now, we're not quite sure when it's gonna happen or what's it actually gonna mean or how it's gonna work, um, but some discussions are underway. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.